Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Ed Talks. I'm with my friend Doug Meal. Doug, welcome to Ed Talks. Thank you, Ed. Happy to be here. Now, this could be fun because I think a lot of people always wondered whatever happened to IBM Watson and Explorus. And you've written a book that's coming out called The Rise and Fall of Explorus and IBM Watson Health. And the subtitle is Your Personal Memoir of a Healthcare Moonshot That Misfired. That Tell is us cool. about I, I know as a splash when it happened and everyone was like, hey, what's they were super excited, but then what happened? Tell us the rest of the story. Well, thank you. Thank you, Ed. So the uh so there's Watson and then there's Watson Health. And so that was actually, I'm glad you 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 uh you stated that in the beginning because Watson still exists uh through the Watson X AI service, but Watson Health was a different division set up in IBM, which was a which I'm we were told was a, a very big deal. It was the first division focused on a uh on a domain, you know, healthcare. And uh, that, that was formed in uh, 2015, April 2015. Eclorus, a company that um, that I helped co-found, was acquired at that time to become a part of the division. And uh, and as folks uh, may know from the news, it had an implosion in the, you know, May in uh, 2018, and the division kind of fizzled, and then it was sold off for uh, for spare parts uh, and became Meritive. That it failed is widely known, but why? And that was the, the great, great cue up why um, it confused people because IBM seemed to have everything going for it, right? It had a bunch of acquisitions. Yeah, you, you had this great success with uh, with Jeopardy. And I'm, but don't get me wrong, I'm a great, I'm a Jeopardy fan. Uh, I was a huge, a huge fan of that project. And yeah, the whole thing didn't make, the failure didn't make a ton of sense. And so as I, as I try to explain in the book, you have to get back into the trends for the context. Because IBM at that time, it's easy to forget, but at that time was going through a kind of an existential crisis. Uh, the 2010s, um, if you look at the numbers, IBM was having down quarter after down quarter after down quarter. And that's not something you normally expect from a tech company. And, uh, and then comparing that to some other tech companies of the era, I mean, remember Sun Microsystems, one of the hottest companies in the tech sector in the late 90s, swallowed up and became an asterisk, you know, 10 years later. So there are a lot of people at IBM who are wondering, like, what's going to happen to us? Maybe not tomorrow, maybe not the next year, maybe not two years, but like, there were some serious clouds. Unfortunately, when people get kind of desperate like that, they don't always make great decisions. And and what happened with Watson Health, and I still think it was a, a good idea, but everybody was trying to turn every knob to 11 all at the same time. So they, they wanted billions of revenue. They wanted profitability, which is different than revenue, different than just revenue. That means you've optimized your processes and they wanted all IBM tech. And remember, IBM had been lagging in the big data era preceding this. And they, and they bought a whole bunch of acquisitions and then said, we're going to rebuild everything now. And the, the challenge with that is, you know, with inorganic growth, you can buy a bunch of things inorganically and now great, we've bought this company, we bought that company, we bought this other company, but the act of integrating those companies unfortunately requires organic thinking and organic skills, like the very kind of product management and development that you think you don't have to do if you just bought them. The act of all of those things happening at one time um, yeah, it was it was just too much all at the same time. And uh, and that's that's what the book uh, the book describes, you know, the rise and fall. I mean, it describes um, explores what it actually takes, the hard work and the iteration and the bumps and the bruises that come along with it. And I do uh, I do try to give IBM props for for what they were trying to do, which I think was was worth a shot. But it, again, in the context of what was happening in 2015, 2018, with all the knobs turn to the right, you wound up, you know, as acquisitions, we wound up with um, so many conflicting uh, opinions and, and never being able to make anybody happy. So that's... Yeah, and it's, as we know from history and other case studies, it's it's hard to do an acquisition well. Doug, what, what are one or two things, and maybe it's in the, in the epilogue of the book, but what are one or two things you'd recommend for a company, you know, taking aside Explorers and IBM, Watson Health, taking that aside and based on lessons learned, like what are two things that you'd want to really make sure of before you get too cozy with another company? Oh, strategic vision. Um, and what is the integrated portfolio? You mean like from an acquisition standpoint, like before being acquired, really trying to hammer out like what is your vision um, post-acquisition, not just getting the money and running away, but like what is the vision 
um, of an integrated product line because, you know, everybody at Explorers, we were in it to win it. I mean, we weren't, we were there. I mean, we wanted, we wanted, um, we were in it for the long haul. And, uh, and so it was quite a disappointment to have it and implode the way it did. Um, and I right. think it was, you know. Yeah, it's about alignment. Like you said, yeah, the vision. Alignment. Line, and we've seen it happen many times just with hospitals and hospitals in M&A activity. And, and, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to pull off. It's hard to do. So I appreciate you taking the time, putting it out in writing so that we can all learn. Appreciate from that. It. Thank you. And then Doug, it answers the questions because I think everyone always wondered, hey, whatever happened to, you know, XYZ. So thank you so much. I'll put in the show notes how they can buy the book. Thank you, Ed.